Hello and welcome to day 10 of the 31 days of Howling Beasts. I am your host of this show, of this uh, Legion shenanigans. Um, t- again, great support from our friends. And um, I'm bringing you today Mr. Dan Bone from the podcast on Haunted Hill. Um, cons- consummate insomniac now, I'm sure. He's got two, two, two twin babies, uh, brand new ones. But um, he took the time to, to give us the longest review that we've had thus far on this show. I haven't heard uh, all of them yet, obviously, but this is this is uh, the butter zone, baby. This is the longest one that uh, we've had, and it is uh, on the 1984 Franco Prosperi written and directed Animal Attack Marvel Wild Beasts uh, from 1984, I mentioned. Um, I couldn't tell you any stars, but you, you, you know, he'll give you your basic plot synopsis, but it is a crazy movie. Uh, he mentions something that will make you feel uncomfortable, uh, many things. Um, fr- from the research I've done, I haven't seen any other animal cruelty besides, besides them painting the mice black that were white. I guess they couldn't get black mice, I, I, uh, black rats, I, I don't know how that would happen, but, um... Another thing is, if you're if you're a, a sensitive viewer, you should be sensitive to this subject. There there is a point in the review where Dan mentions something uh, that that will make you feel uncomfortable, with it, and it should, because uh, the fourteen year old girl in question's breasts are exposed for like a split second. Not sure why it's in there. Uh, it doesn't take the enjoyment of the rest of the film away from me. It's just that part, like yeah, why why don't you just cut that part out, man? You know, it's it's. Conversation piece, perhaps. Uh, I I don't know. I'm not going to say the guy's full pedo. I couldn't tell you for sure. But all that aside, here's Dan Bone with his amazing, amazingly long <laughs> review of Wild Beast from 1984. Uh, enjoy that shit. Hello, everybody. It's the spooky season, and something special is happening. This is Dan from the podcast on Haunted Hill. And I am doing a little favour for my bearded brother from across the pond, Gary. He of Cinema Beef Podcast, Two Drink Minimum and all those other fancy, cool, badass podcasts that he does. And he is doing something special for this spooky Halloween season, as you'll probably know by now. Because this won't be your your first trip to uh, the 31 Days of Howling Beasts, which... Uh, I've been very, uh, I'm very honoured to be part of. So, uh, Gary is uh, assembled, uh, I was going to say that the Avengers of podcasting, probably not, but I'm, I would be more like the Ant-Man, I guess. Um, but yeah, he's assembled uh, some podcasters, myself included, here I am, and we are here to take a look at films with the word beast in the title. So, this could be fun, this will be fun, because I was lucky enough... Gary says, you know, pick, pick a movie, have a look. So I said, oh, have a look at this list. Wild Beasts from 1984. This is the one that I decided upon. Now, the reason I decided upon this, because I'd never seen this. But let me read you the synopsis from IMB, and then we'll talk through this classic master cinema. And there is an element of sarcasm in that, but also I did have a lot of fun with this. As Gary said I would when I told him I would, I'd pick in this one. So here's the synopsis from IMDb. The water supply for a large city zoo becomes contaminated, get ready for it, with PCP. And the animals go crazy and get loose. Yes, that's right. A zoo full of animals gets high on PCP and ransacks the city. It's everything you want it to be and more. Now... I'm not normally one to go through the IMDb trivia, even on my own show, the podcast on Haunted Hill. It's not often we'll sort of sit there and read through all the trivia, but I think it's very important to get a taste of what went on in the making of this film before we talk about it, because it's just unbelievable IMDb trivia. Let me start off with the first piece of trivia is the sequence with the tiger in the subway tunnel was shot from 1am to 3am in the morning. The tiger got loose in the subway station and hid in a bathroom before deciding to go to the top of a train. And the subway station employees were prevented from entering the station until the tiger was caught. So, kind of a guerrilla filmmaking thing going on here. 
How are we going to shoot this tiger in a subway? Just get a tiger, put it in a subway. Okay, cool. Tiger escape though, didn't it? Amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, whilst the rats had to be painted black because they were actually white. I thought that was pretty good. I don't think this film could say no animals were harmed. Um, but, but, you know, there we go. Uh, an elephant stepped on the director, Francesco Propespo's foot during the filming of the sequence with the elephants on the airport runway. More on that later. Elephants on an airport runway. But let's focus on the fact that the director's foot was crushed by an elephant. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, Antonio De Leo was almost decapitated by the polar bear in the scene where the bear swings one of its paws at him as it narrowly missed his head. Again, you're working with a live polar bear. What are they thinking? What are they thinking? Just wanted to mention some of the bits of trivia for this one now let's run down generally what happens you know i've given you the synopsis but i want to run through this a little bit more it's got a great soundtrack off the bat reminds me of your kind of streets of rage from the sega mega drive sega genesis it's kind of a bit synthy a little bit sexy kind of your you know you can imagine a, a late 80s early 90s cop show that has this kind of as, a, as its score but it's good good score you've got a badass uh main actor main lead um who basically looks like uh, a cross between hall and those incredible mustache incredible hair always got his chest showing fantastic stuff uh, he is just kind of like imagine if magnum pi was also a zookeeper an expert on animals that's what he is he happens to be this sexy zookeeper He's also a bit of a badass, brave. He's like Indiana Jones. He's like, he's like all these heroes rolled into one, but with a moustache that only Freddie Mercury could probably rival. It's, you know, you know you're, you're onto something good when you see this as your lead man. Um, we do get, um, not quite sure really where the, the PCP comes from, but we do see the opening shot establishes that this city is going through some tough times. There are literally hypodermic needles everywhere. Literally just everywhere. There's just that you're walking down the street, you see these shots of them. Where the hell are they? This is there's more needles in this than there were in that pit in that that saw movie where she dives in. A lot of needles is what I'm saying. Therefore, you know, we get the hint that drugs are rife in this city. Um, we also get a, a strange shot where we get like this montage of the zoo and the sewage plant, and you kind of think, well, I guess what they're trying to say here is. There's drugs going into the zoo water. That's exactly what this is. So this is a, an Italian production. It's directed by, as I mentioned earlier, Francaro, uh, sorry, Franco Prosperi, whose foot was crushed by the elephant. Um, so it's an English language, so it's kind of dubbed. So at times it's hard to catch what was said. For me, this was on YouTube, um, and it's there if you guys want to watch it. I'd recommend it. It's a really... It's great. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, there's some great scenes in it, which I'll, I'll get go through. I'm not going to go through the entire plot, but I'm you know I'm, I want to talk about some particular scenes. There's a couple of bits which made me uncomfortable. There's probably the most uncomfortable I felt during a uh, topless scene. There's a girl, probably I would say about thirteen, maybe twelve. I'm not sure why the director decided to give her a topless scene. Really, really strange choice. So moving on from that, uh, we're also presented with um, a horse's head. Well, actually, there's a couple of horse's heads, real horse's heads from what I can tell, being um, literally cleaved down the centre to be fed to a tiger. The tiger is very excited about the prospect of his dinner. Again, this is your kind of cannibal holocaust style. I guess the horse was dead because it was just a head. Uh, it may have even been a fake one. I doubt it. I doubt if they had the budget to create uh, a fake head as good as this. But either way, uh, those are the couple of bits that made me a little uncomfortable. I uh, just wanted to touch on those briefly. So, yeah, basically, we got this badass zookeeper. He's friends with a reporter. PCP gets into the, the zoo. This zoo happens to contain a bunch of tigers. It's kind of like Tiger King. You know, he's got... They've got tigers, they've got hyenas, there's a polar bear, a bunch of lions, uh, a, a cheetah. I've got probably my favourite scenes with the cheetah. Talk about that in a bit. Um, and a bunch of other animals, including some elephants. Imagine all of these animals high on PC. It's kind of like the jungle book gone wild. It is insane. So they all escape because there's some inept guards um, who are too busy looking at porno mags, gambling and listening uh, to 80s uh, Euro pop electro. And they've got these brand new uh, 
electronic gates and cages, but they, they're malfunctioning, a bit like Jurassic Park. And of course, these animals, they're all high on PCP. They want out. So they get out of these cages. We also get um, a guy, um, a blind guy, who records the sounds of animals. And he's got a, a, an Alsatian or a German Shepherd um, guide dog. You might be thinking, this sounds, you know, a little bit like the guy from Suspiria who had the, the German Shepherd, the blind guy. And I've got to be honest with you, he ends up in exactly the same way. His dog drinks some of that PCP water. And of course, later on, while he's listening to, listening back to baboons humping or whatever it is he can do, his dog goes crazy and uh, rips him apart. So, poor blind guy. Uh, similar fate to the guy from Suspiria. So, let's go through some of these fantastic um, scenes here. So, we've got... Um, Probably one of our first kills is some rats swarming out of the sewers. They kill a cat, rip it apart, and then they decide to attack a couple who are uh, making love, the term, in a car. And uh, they just pour into the car and they rip them to shreds as well. So first off, you know, don't have sex when there's PCP high uh, rats running around. It's a top tip from the Haunted Hill boys there um the elephants are kind of responsible for a lot of this because obviously with their sheer size they break through a lot of the walls and the gates and they lead the way for the hyenas the tigers etc to all escape these the security guards they are immediately killed there's as i've said um a porn addicted guy a gambler and a very old man who are torn to shreds by um a mixture of leopards uh, a couple of tigers a few other big cats jump in there as well so they're, they're immediately ripped to shreds. One of them does survive just about, and he manages, his face is sort of torn. He manages to sort of call the authorities. The animals have escaped! You know, so that that happens. Now, the reason I said I don't think animals um, were, you know, unharmed, for the rats, going back to the rats, so the zookeeper's called in, he's friends with a, uh, a chief of police, and they find these rats... You know, they've tried to use water to blast them back in the sewers, but they keep coming and they keep coming. So in the end, they do you just get their flamethrowers out. Because, of course, the Italian police department will have flamethrowers on standby. And they just set fire to all of these rats. Now, you can fake that, of course, but there is a couple of shots where it looks like there are real rats on fire running around. And there's also a scene where some rats are on a windscreen of a car or a a windshield of a car and a flame is sort of literally inches from them. So I'm not sure how unscathed some of these rodents were, but Hey, that was Europe in the eighties. No budget. You know what it's like. Uh, what else happens? Okay. So I've mentioned the guide dog that he, you know, we all knew that was coming. That's fine. Um, we get, uh, the elephants causing a pile up on the road. You know, you're driving down the road. You don't expect to see a bunch of high elephants ramming things. Um, there's actually a scene where the elephants decide to to just kill a couple in a car. And I've never seen trunk strangulation is the phrase I'd use. Um, the elephant literally reaches into the window of the car and strangles the guy. The girl escapes, but uh, unfortunately the elephant stomps her head to to paste on the ground. So they're kills. Like, it's great. We've got some great kills. You know, it's fantastic. If you're one of the people like me who lies in bed at night looking at YouTube videos of when animals attack, you know, lions killing the dickheads that are trying to shoot them and safari and this kind of thing, then you're thinking, well, yeah, this is great. And this is exactly what you get. What you want is what you get with this film. Fantastic. So they announce a state of emergency because, you know, it's all kicking off around the city. Uh, it's all over the news. Stay inside. There's at least 30 big cats on the loose, plus a bunch of hyenas, um, some elephants, a load of other animals. Um, please stay inside. Protect your children, all that kind of stuff. My favourite shot is this great scene where this girl is uh, driving a drop-top, a convertible uh, Volkswagen Beetle, we would call it in the UK. I think it's called a Bug elsewhere but in other words it's, it's a bumblebee from transform a convertible and she's driving along and she sort of breaks down a little bit gives it a kick and then she sees a cheetah and she thinks jesus christ you know as you would there's a cheetah i better get back in my car luckily the car starts so she drives this cheetah high on pcp don't forget chase gives chase and we get this incredible scene where and again this is all hats off to the gorilla filmmaking. This incredible scene where this cheetah is literally chasing down this this Volkswagen, and um, I do I, I understand that they must have gone to some empty streets at three a.m. to film some of these things, but it's really really great. I've never seen anything like it to be honest with you. And then the, the cops 
our, our hero and the cop, they are driving the other way and they almost hit the girl in her car. But then they see that the reason she's speeding is she's being chased by this cheetah. So they bust a U-turn and they flip back. And then they're chasing the cheetah, which is chasing the girl. And it's all shot, you know, it's a bit choppy. You know, the camera work's not great, but you can see it's all in camera. It's all real. No special effects. Really great scene. Um, the girl, unfortunately, is involved in a horrific crash which means she's probably got 90 percent burns she gets freddy krueger and um the cheetah i think the cheetah escapes i remember what happens to the cheetah but that's that's cool so you know we've got elephants killing people cheetahs chasing volkswagens rats killing couples that are humping it's so much going on here it's fantastic not to mention there's also tigers and hyenas on the loose so many great things happening here um then all of a sudden i mentioned this earlier the elephants decide they are going to the airport i guess they packed their trunk. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> um, I'll move on from that joke. So, yeah, elephants on the runway. So we've got a plane coming into land, which, you know, very common. That's exactly what happens. That's all that happens. And, you, you know, you're flying in. Yeah. There's our runway. Wait. Hang on a minute. There's elephants on the runway. Is that right? Am I seeing this? So they swerve. They can't pull the plane up in time. The plane crashes, hits a, a bunch of um, electricity pylons. This causes a major blackout, power outage throughout the entire city. We are now fucked. We are talking major 28 days later. We've got no electricity. We've got PCP animals on the loose and don't even have sex because the rats will. If you're blind, your dog's going to kill you. An elephant will strangle you. This is how bad it's got. So, you know, it, it's pretty bad. We get another of my favourite scenes here, which I touched on again when I mentioned the trivia from from IMDb. Tiger in a Subway. These are band names, I'm thinking. Tiger in a Subway. Elephants on a Runway. These are good band names. names. If anyone anyone wants them, hit me up. Uh, the podcast Haunted, Haunted Hill. Uh, give me a shout. Quite let you have these names you know, for a fee, of course. But yeah, Tiger on a Subway. So the subway breaks down, obviously, because you know the, the electricity's gone off in the city. Suddenly we see there's a tiger and it's stalking. And then it smashes through the train window, mauls a guy to death. People kind of escape, run through the tunnel. The tiger chases them. All good stuff. And I've got to say, again, the main guy um, whose name escapes me, um, I think his name's Rip. The, the character name, um, Antonio De Leo, that's his name. He, I don't know if he's a, like a, an animal handler or just a completely mental man, but he is up close and personal with these animals. Because when they eventually catch the tiger, he sort of gives it a uh, an injection. And he's, he was with the tiger earlier as well. He was stroking it when it was normal, before it got, got all high. Um, and he goes up to it, you know, injects it, he's stroking it. And they, so they got the tiger out. So they're slowly getting these animals, cheetahs, tigers, and all this kind of stuff. It's all, it's all fine. A um, couple of crazy scenes coming up here, though. We get, um, in parallel to this tiger in a subway scene, the, there's a reporter uh, who's on the subway, and her daughter is in a ballet school. And this, I thought they weren't going to go down this route, but they did. Spo- so spoiler, Let's see, spoilers here, guys. If you're going to watch The Wild Bee, spoilers. Um, but yeah, the kids at one point get all very thirsty and they go off and drink. And I was thinking, surely these kids aren't going to get all high, PCP, and crazy. They do. Oh, they do. They kill their teacher. They all get knives. And uh, the reason they get knives is because, and I didn't see this coming, of all the animals you know, that, that you think of on the loose in a city, oh, that would be scary, or this scenario would be scary. These kids are suddenly chased by a fucking polar bear. Yes, a polar bear is skulking down the school corridor. And there's a shot with two children running along. They might even be holding knives and meat cleavers. And right behind them is this polar bear. Now, I don't know how they got this polar bear to be so docile. Because if I remember rightly, a polar bear is one of the most lethal animals on the planet. They kill just for sport almost. Um, They're huge. They're crazier than any other bear even the koala bear, they're crazier than that thing. Even Winnie the Pooh, they are crazy. Polar bears, they are absolutely crazy. And this, they've got it walking down the corridor behind these two children. I don't know. I don't know. It's got to be seen to be. It's all on YouTube for free. You can watch this film. So this polar bear is doing the rounds. It's trying to find these kids. These kids kill their teacher. Um, our hero, Rip, t- turns up and uh, he says to the, to the cop, let's go in and get the kids. Hang on a minute. There's my, my my friend Polar Bear from the zoo. This is the scene where the guy almost lost his head because he goes over to a real polar bear lying on the ground, strokes it, pats it, it swipes it, sort of moves out of the way just in time. What the fuck was going on with the filming? 
What was the insurance like on this film? Was there insurance? Probably not. What was the budget? What was going on? How much do you have to pay an actor to go and play with a real polar bear? I don't know. But anyway, the end of this film ends with all the, the electricity's come back on, all the lights, the power, but the kids are on PC. Another good band name there. Kids are on PC. And uh, yeah, they've done a load of experiments. I probably should mention from some of the blood of some of the animals that they've caught. They find out some bonds, some are, but PCP into the water on purpose. I don't really know if it's explained why, if it was like a terrorist thing or something, but it doesn't matter because a zoo full of animals is on PCP. How many times do I need to say that to sell this film to you? You know, it's Gary, you said, have you seen it? And I said, I haven't seen it actually, but the, 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 the synopsis alone, it sounds incredible. He said, you're going to love this. Gary, you were right. I love this. And the film ends with a, a load of kids uh, with knives trying to break through a door. Um, to get to the adults i'm assuming they don't get to them but we kind of get your classic 80s almost freeze frame um unfortunately the end sort of scroll was in italian and i don't speak italian so i don't know what it said i think it said something along the lines from what i could tell because it said bambinos um i think it says something along the lines of the children eventually recovered um and none of them were killed but obviously they did kill their teacher with knives. I don't know. It doesn't matter what happened. The main thing is I've just witnessed a load of animals laying waste to a city. One scene I forgot to mention again, which is why I don't think animals were unharmed. At one point, the hyenas and the lions, because there's lions as well, they decide to uh, raid a local farm. And they head to this farm. They smash in the walls, eat a load of horses. And then we see real lions and hyenas eating real pigs like i think they're live pigs and then they're attacking cows as well this causes a stampede of cows and bulls to head down the main high street uh, a load of horses um and they all go into sort of restaurants and smash through the restaurants and they're not on pcp they're just on the run they're just trying to get away from the animals that are on pcp but they cause just as much destruction um no. as you would imagine i thought this was a good opportunity they didn't do it, but I thought this would have been a great opportunity to have a bunch of in a milkshake stand um, or a milkshake like cafe and have a bunch of cows come in and smash the place up a bit. They didn't take that opportunity. That's a shame. Maybe if they make a sneak to this, that's something. Yeah. They, again, Dan Bone at the Podcast Hill, hit me up. I've got so many ideas. Nice. Guys. It'd be brilliant. But listen, let me wrap this up here. I've talked enough. Again, how many times do I need to say it? A zoo full of animals on PCP. It's fantastic. That is The Wild Beasts from 1984. That Gary, thank you so much for A, allowing me to be part of your 31 Days of Howling Beasts. There's your little howl. I don't know if anyone's doing it, but I wanted to do it anyway. But also B, Gary, thank you for introducing me. It's fantastic. Uh, it'll be one that I probably come back to. It's definitely a good one to watch late at night. A few beers and a few friends. Um, it's got some great gore in it. Great soundtrack. And one thing I would say is, it's quite a cheesy film in some ways, but it's, it's done so seriously. It takes itself so seriously, but not in a stupid way, that you can't help but sort of go along with it, really. And the dialogue itself is it's really good and non-cheesy. Go check it out, YouTube, right now. That's it from me. Happy Halloween, guys. Check me out, podcast on Haunted Hill. Thanks to Gary. I'm out of here. And remember, animals in zoos, drugs are bad. Okay. All right, guys, that was Dan. Like I said, listen to uh podcast on Hill and Legion Podcast.com, of course. Go check out uh, anything he's doing. He's constantly working with RJ on Bite Size Cinema. I'm quite sure he has something happening in October with that. I forget which movie it is, though, so I'm, I'm unprepared in that sense. But um, day 11 will give you another British film from me uh, called The Beast in the Cellar which is a very different kind of beast film and very interesting. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys about it. Um, but that'll be day 11, and we have many more reviews to come from other people. Like I said, I'm just trying to spread it out. But 